But when you think of the word, the word debacle, that's not a word that comes to mind when you introduce all these speeches. <laughs> all these speeches can be a little bit left field, but they've certainly always been interesting and we always look forward to what he has to say. <clears throat> well, today he's going to focus on the strategic manual, sorry, for strategic, strategic relationships manual on researching and presenting. Now, this is a speech he did recently for a co camp like it was. So he's using the opportunity today to tweak it a little bit, perhaps make it a little bit less technical for a less technical audience, essentially. The timing today for the speech is eight to 10 minutes. So that's um, eight, eight, nine, 10 minutes. So on that note, I'd like to welcome to all the entertainers. Toastmasters. A few weeks ago I had the opportunity to speak at CodeCamp, which is a not-for-profit event run annually by Zero Trainee to evangelize technology and attract more people to the industry and just to have a little bit of nerdy fun. And this is the talk that I, I have prepared. My goal for today is to cut down some of that nerdy technical stuff and share some passion with you that I have for this material. Let's go to data. First of all, this is the challenge that I've set, set myself to find. Can a computer calculate taste? Or was the dystopian futuristic matrix was right about our AI overlords and them making everything taste like chicken because they could not figure out what chicken tastes like. <laughs> I'll go over a business problem that I was facing. I will not go over any clean code, or for that matter, the code that I ended up writing. And I will share some photos, like this photo of an alpaca loin burger from bin 44. <laughs> now, Wellington visa on a plate. Does, is anyone familiar with, with the process? Yeah. I am not affiliated with Visa Wellington on a plate or Burger Welly. If you know someone who can make <laughs> it happen, tell me, but seriously. This here is a comfort pork belly burger from Hop Garden with fennel slaw and kiwi fruit jam. I don't post these photos anywhere. These are, these are just my personal photos. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you all know of Burger Wellington, and this is the map from the previous years, Burger Wellington. A lot happening in the city and a lot happening in the inner suburbs. And this is what their websites have looked over the last couple of years. Very aesthetically pleasing, and the company that built them, ClickSuit, follow what's called user-centric design. Now, user-centric design stands, uh, tends to represent focusing on what the user is after. So they try to get into the mind of a Burger Wellington on a plate goer and figure out what they want. Now my goals for Burger Wellington on a plate were quite different. My objectives were not targeted by ClickSuit. I wanted to organize work lunches and I wanted to try as many burgers as possible. So I had to do something else. So, with some code, you can get some of that data that is available through those websites, and let's get it into a table. So now I have a nice table of the coordinates of, of the location of the burger, the name and the description, and I also have the price. So I can already start ordering burgers by price, but that's not really enough. And I can order them by latitude and longitude, 
which is pretty meaningless. So what I want, wanted to do next was figure out how far those burgers are from me. And there is the right way to do it, which involves Google Maps API, the pro, uh, way to access data programmatically, or I could use Google and see if there is a better way to coordinate that. And uh, there is, turns out, there is a very straightforward formula for this. I'm, I'm not good at algebra or tr trigonometry, um, so that's uh, that's the formula. That's that's, that's all. That's more of the formula. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> this here is uh, for for those who like go to pub quizzes. That is the Earth's radius. So that's, that was fun to find out. And after using this formula, and uh, we will end up with a table of burgers with prices and distances. So now we can already start ordering things. Maybe we can't quite make our way out to Masterton to try that delici delicious burger, but we can look for something closer towards the office. And then we will ask for people who want to attend that, bur that burger sampling. And they will put their names down and I'll, I'll tell you them up and we'll do something about it. Now, there has been big talks about privacy lately. If you've heard of GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, that's coming in effect now in Europe and affecting pretty much everyone. It's all about privacy. So while I have three years worth of spreadsheets on my former co-workers that have attended these events, how would I protect their privacy? I mean, I can't just say Alice and Bob. How would I do that? Oh. Or I could use emojis. So instead of using names, I will use emojis throughout my presentation. So by now we have a list of burgers, their prices, and distance from the office. And I also have a good idea of how many people want to go. Now, if anyone has ever organized anything, people who say they want to go <laughs> uh, is not the same as people who can go and people who end up going. <laughs> so I'll just go, go back in slides a little bit and show this is a pretty neat tool that um, I've ended up, we've ended up using Google. If you have an event and you have several dates or several times available, you can send out an invite and everyone will say, hey, I'm available on these dates and you can get more of a consensus that has helped plan those a lot but still we're back to the problem of how do we calculate who will come up so everyone uh, knows that we're all unique individuals and we have to be treated with respect and dignity and appreciation and there were a lot of talks about at code camp about this personal aspect not in here, and here I'm going to show you how to reduce people to a number. Say, so, this individual here is very reliable. She says she'll go, 90% she will be there. Others, not so much. So you just uh, look at everyone who said they will go, and you'll say, oh, that, that gentleman over there is uh, quite, quite a flake. Just, he says he'll go, and he only shows up 10% of the time. So you tell you that up, and you end up with a number, and you call the restaurant and make a booking for a table for 6.8. <laughs> they do not appreciate that level of precision. <laughs> this here is a burger from Burger Liquor with aged beef patty and double smoked burger, uh, double smoked bacon. So by now we know how to calculate how many people to book the table for. We have a list of people who want to go to a particular burger, distance from the office, price, and we can organize this event. But what if we could make recommendations with science? So this is where the protein of the talk kicks in, like in this the famous mac and cheese burger where the buns are made of grilled mac and cheese and there is a regular patty. Okay, 
So one of the goals I've had for myself for a really, really long time was to get, get a bit of a grasp on machine learning. And it's not an intuitive subject. So OCR, optical character recognition, that's something that helps read license plates on speed cameras or hand recognition and uh, various smartphone software. So it looks at, hey, is there a dot over there? Is there a dot over there? Is there no dot over there? It's probably a zero. But the trick is, all of that, all of those dots on the image, they're treated as individual inputs. And I can't follow that intuitively. I just can't. So I can't get a very um, good understanding of how it works. But what I can maybe follow is a spreadsheet of information that I am passionate about. So we have a list of um, distances, we have a list of prices, name of the venue, description of the burger, and people who will attend. Um, I'll find the unique ingredients in those descriptions and I will have some code. So this is what it looks like, very impressive. So price and distances on the left, individual ingredients and people who will attend. And where, once I've run the learning algorithm, it will actually predict who will go and who will not go to these events and who will like and who will not like these burgers. And with some tweaking, <coughs> green means good. Green means I got that prediction right and they came back and they really enjoyed the burger. And red didn't, didn't get it quite right. So how is this useful? Well, now I can say, say there was a $20 burger within 100 meters from, from this place right here and it was some sort of a delicious triple chicken burger. <laughs> and if I press make a prediction, so having all that information about who liked what, what ingredients and who was a bit cheap to go to a particular place or who didn't bother going further than, further than a certain distance from the office, it will tell me that this person will not go, this person will not go, but everyone on this side will want to attend. And if the audience has, is there a description of a burger from the audience that you can throw at me and I can see if that is something that people would like. The one from Burger Liquor. The one means. from Burger Liquor. Um, the one from Burger Liquor is already here oh. somewhere. The one from <coughs> Mamichi in Marthenburg. Oh, yeah, and what's um, it was um, pork belly, it had a beetroot brioche bun, um, and it had like a sesame dressing coleslaw. Sesame it was really good. Dressing yeah, I took my nana there a second time. How far, <laughs> um, how far do you reckon uh, that is from here, just ballpark? Uh, I'm gonna say that's about 60 kilometers. It's an, yeah, an hour. Uh, sorry, how many? 60, 60. kilometers. 60. Oh, okay, that's, that's quite an hour flight. And uh, what do you reckon, $25 maybe? Um, I, I, I'm going to say it was $17. $17. That is a very specific amount. I love it. <laughs> Let's see if we can make a prediction. So it picked up some of the unique ingredients. <laughs> and it says that two people, two people will be passionate enough to go that far. Because there is clearly, clearly a distance factor. But what if, what if we could take Martinborough and have it right here in the office? <laughs> a lot more people would want to go. So this concludes the um, demo of, of the talk. And what I want to finish with is any, if there were any inaccuracies in the, in the model, it is just because I don't have enough data. So I bought a domain name, burgerburgerburger.com. And if you go there, you will be welcomed with a form. And if you leave your email address, I will let you know when I have this as an app or if I give up. 
and I will welcome any feedback, additional to formal feedback I will receive today. And some of, just to leave you with some learnings from this machine learning algorithm, when in doubt, maximize chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.